So when is a box not really a box, but it's still a box? Okay, after that little cryptic intro, uh, I have gotten a commission, not a barn burner of a commission, it's a small commission. One of our artist friends is a sculptor and she does these heads and busts and things, but she needs bases for them. Here's uh, some pictures of uh, ones that she's already had bases made for, but the gentleman's no longer around, I guess. So she'd like me to make some bases for more of her sculptures. And they're going to be very simple mitered boxes. And he made his out of three quarter inch, but that's really not necessary. I'm going to use uh, half inch plywood, uh, furniture grade, you know, nice surface plywood. Uh, there's a little trick in doing the miters that I'm going to describe and I've learned from another YouTuber. And they're going to be about six and a half or so square and about four and a half high, finished for paint. She's going to then paint them. Then I'm going to epoxy armatures into the, sta into the busts. And then when we're ready, we'll, we'll locate where that armature is in relation to the bust so that we can get it in the middle of the base and we'll drill a hole where the armature is. Makes more sense when you look at it. So first thing I want to do is I want to get one straight edge on here and then cut out all of my pieces in the width, or the height actually, uh, for the sides. And then uh, after th that I'll do the, the, the 45s. And then I'll do the tops. But uh, the glue, glue, glue method is probably going to be the typical put the, put the blue tape on it, flip it over, put the glue on it, drop, draw it all together, and either clamp or pin it together. Or both. So let's get started by giving myself a nice straight edge on at least one side of, of this. And it's actually going to be on, if you can see the grain in the camera, it goes this way. Straight edge will be in this side. So the grain goes all the way around the, now, uh, the box. Now it really doesn't matter that much because these are going to be painted pieces. So let's, let's do some table saw stuff. So these are all I'm going to make about four of these uh, for her, and these are all of the pieces for the sides. And what I need to do now is cut them to length, and then a little bit longer, and then go ahead and set the saw to the to the miter, 45 degree miter, and go ahead and, and cut them, cut the miters out, um, which will be fun because they're going to be going across this way. But that's okay; I can do that. Uh, I'll set up the miter saw now for cutting these to length, and we'll go ahead and cut them to length. Have a stop block in place at six and eighth, so I can I can wiggle around with the the miter a little bit. Um, I'm obviously going to trim one edge to make it flush, nice and smooth. I mean, 90 degrees to the thing, smooth, no milling stuff from the factory, and then go in and slice off all that I can for. Um, for the, for the size of these things. So let's get, let's do some, some more sawing. Okay, so I've got my sides for four boxes. The uh, tops will come later. Um, probably have to get another sheet of plywood to get all the tops out uh, because they, you know, they're going to be six by six, thereabouts. To fit on on top. Now you'll see when I glue these together and pin them, there's going to be a lot of glue in there, of course. But I'm also going to put corner blocks all the way around on the inside to give some added strength. I'm not going to use splines; I'm just going to use the corner blocks on the inside. So next thing to do on these is to go ahead and cut the 45s on the uh, on the on the ends of each and one side here for the top. So ends end and for the top. Back to the table saw. So a little tip on miters uh, I learned from another YouTuber is how you set up the saw. Now, chop saw, table saw, it can be the same either way. So if you have a miter joint and it's perfect, as you can see in the camera, you have no gaps in the joint. But if it's a little off, 
this way, in other words, if you cut it a little shy, you want a little too, too wide, you get a gap. I'm going to exaggerate that. And it doesn't, see, it doesn't seal up correctly, and you're kind of having a hard time with that. What you want to do is, and I'll demonstrate that, is go a little shy of 45, so it's kind of uh, exaggerating again, so it's kind of open to the inside of the box. That means that your this joint here is going to be really tight. If you do it just a little bit, the clamps will close that bottom up, that inside joint up really well. So let's go ahead and set up, I'll set up the saw blade now and show you what I'm talking about. Now to set up the saw to make the miters. So I've got my Wixie digital gaugey thing here set to zero. I'll put that on the saw blade. All right, almost 90 degrees. And now we're going to crank it over. Now you can see here it's gone past 45 degrees and that's what I want. So it's going to, it'll be open a little bit at the bottom here. But the top will be uh, nice and tight uh, of, the, of the joint itself. Now I had to adjust my table saw uh, stop for the 45 degree crank thing to uh, allow me to go past 45. It's really simple on the table on this saw. It just it's bolts right under here, but it's just a little difficult to get to sometimes. So that's what we're going to do to make these 45 degree cuts. I have set up the saw to the right angle that I want. I set the distance correctly from the saw to the fence to in order to cut the top of each one of these pieces where the lid's going to sit on, which will also be cut at, at 45 miters. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting it to the very edge here so it's nice, clean, and crisp. So let's do some more saw stuff. And now for the next setup. I adjusted the fence, set the depth correctly so I can do these cuts here. Yeah, see, yeah. Uh, more, um, more high speed, or excuse me, more time lapse. I'll shorten these time lapses up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the ends. The bottom, of course, will stay flat so it can sit flat on the ground. There'll be a piece of felt down here to protect whatever furniture it's sitting on. So. More, uh, shall we say, not boring, but just repetitive cuts. These are the cuts you got to be careful about, by the way. Repetitive cuts, lots of them can lead to complacency and danger. Tip of the day. And there we go. Now all of the four sides for all four boxes are ready for um, the initial glue up, which will be just folding it in on itself, gluing and pinning the boxes together and indexing them to make sure that they're all square and all that kind of stuff. And that's over at the workbench. So I'm going to leave this saw at this angle because uh, I have to do the tops. They're going to sit down inside these, into these boxes out of another piece of plywood. Oh, you know, I can't do that. I have to put this back up again and bring it back down because I have to cut those strips out first and then do the angles on them. Um, so anyhow, let's go glue these up. And uh, the, the other thing I need to cut when this is on, when it's back on the 45 again is the corner blocks that are going to be used for, uh, uh, the, to, to keep the more strength on the inside. As usual with projects like this, I'll do one of these and then off camera I'll proceed to do all of them. So you get an idea of how this all works first. So I've got the first one laid out on the bench up against the stop block here. All the top bevels are here at this end here for the, uh, for the top that's going to go on. So now I'm going to take my masking tape. Oh, I've also got a strap clamp here that I'm going to be using 
to clamp it all together and then pin it and make sure it's square. What I'm doing is making sure these are tight, relatively tight. There we go. I want it snug. I want the side ends up to snug against each other. So come on down. And you see what I mean when I was talking about I have the all these bevels here. And I want to do is put glue in here and here and at these ends and then fold it up on itself and then clamp and nail it, pin it together. So I want to use a fair amount of glue. So that you know I get a good coverage. You know, we're talking about end grain here on uh, some end grain here with plywood. I mean, my workbench is covered in, in finish and wax, so the glue really won't stick to it. Oops, that's not good. Get that out of there. Picked up a little piece of garbage. All right, so now... What I want to do is I want to bring these pieces together. And you've probably seen this dozens of times. Like that. And then place it on the bench, flat, so that it has uh, a, a surface to sit against to give it uh, squareness, because the bench is really pretty good, flat. Tape that on there like that. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in my corner clamp, strap clamp, corner clamp, whatever you want to call it. Just give this a little snug and then move the, move the clamps up, the, 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 the dogs or whatever you call these things, the, up to more like more towards the center. That looks good. Clamp it tight. And now I want to check for square. I know it's a small distance to measure over. Yep. Okay. And then just for a little bit of added giggles. Now I want to double check to make sure everything is as it should be. Double check my square. Yep. Yep, that's good. That way. And get the glue out of the corners because that's going to be um, where I'm going to put corner blocks in. And you don't need any glue rising up through the corners there. Okay. There we go. Now we come back when this is cured. I open it all up and then we start working to the, doing the top. And with that, I have a box. Well, part of a box. Think of a box. Anyway, uh, it's square. It's ready to go. Got nice miters all the way around here. Now I use the same process that I used to cut the miters on the sides to cut the top. And that is basically cutting the top to size close and then sneaking up on the miters till they fit. It would just drop right in there and fit just about, that's about perfect. So all I need to do now is spread some glue around in here Place this down, put some pressure on it, and, and pin it in place, and I have finished one of the boxes. One down, three to go. The next steps, of course, are to do the remaining three, show you the four when they're done, but then they go, oh, I have to touch this up, got to fill in the, 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 the pinholes and, and do a little bit of sanding and make it really smooth. And then these go back to the owner who is going to paint, prime and paint them the colors that she wants. Now the sculptures that I showed you earlier in this video, they're fired clay. I don't know what temperature they're fired at or what their strength is or whatever, but what she and I have agreed to is I will epoxy threaded rod inside whatever's gonna go on here. Then we'll index that threaded rod in the top that places the the art piece in the middle and that'll be held in place with a washer and a wing nut I don't want anything more than hand or finger tight putting a wrench on something that's that's been epoxied into fired clay 
makes me a little makes me a little itchy. So let me finish up the remaining three, and um, then we'll send them off to the owner to have them primed and painted. Done for now. They are assembled, filled, sanded, and ready for paint and prime. Corner blocks on the inside for added strength and rigidity. Uh, they will go back to the owner now, who will prime and paint them. I've offered to prime them before if she'd like. If not, she'd take care of it herself. After which, we'll take the art pieces and epoxy in the uh, threaded rod and mount them. Um, that's a, another video down the road. I, I don't know how many months from now that's going to be, but that video down the road will take care of that. So, art bases. Kind of a simple project uh, in both design and execution. So until next time, make great things out of wood.